Hey everyone, it's Norm Farrar, the beard guy, and this is my first live event, other than photobombing other people's. Anyways, uh, hope there's somebody out there watching. If not, we're going to do this every week and uh, just kind of get on and answer people's questions. So anyways, why don't you just grab a coffee, grab your lunch, sit back, and we're going to talk a little bit today about... Uh, branding. So if anybody has any questions about branding, uh, you know, just shoot them in and uh, we'll make sure that we cover them. The other thing too, uh, today I should, I guess I should just tell a little bit about myself and if you don't know me, uh, most people know me as the beard guy. Uh, they used to know me as the bald guy until I grew the beard. Uh, I've had a variety of contract manufacturing experience. I grew up in a family that owned um, a variety of manufacturing facilities in Canada, U.S., Taiwan, and still we have one operating in China today. Uh, got involved with some specialty manufacturing, warehousing, promotional marketing, but it all kind of came together with Amazon. So Amazon is my perfect storm. Um, I've been able to put all that experience together, including the branding, into launching my brands and other people's brands. I also have a, uh, a press release and content marketing company called PR Reach and a sourcing logistics company called Hono Worldwide. So let's get into this. I got a, few, a couple of uh, questions here that I kind of pre-made. Um, just in case, you know, we were shy on the first uh, live broadcast. So here's some questions that I was looking at. So what are some of the worst branding mistakes you've seen? So what are some of the worst mistakes you can make? And that's not investing in your brand. So a lot of the times um, people will think that they can do a brand or uh, create a logo or a design on the cheap. And all they're doing is cheapening themselves. Matter of fact, your brand is your equity. When you go to sell your business, if you've got a good solid brand, you'll end up getting a couple extra zeros, maybe one zero, maybe not quite an extra zero, but you'll get more than a really crappy brand. So if there's a time and place to spend money and to think, so you know, just because you're trying to launch a product doesn't mean that you have to go out there and get the first thing that is on your mind and all of a sudden you, you know, register it and, and you start um, um, producing your brand, getting your inventory, and it sucks. Um, spend that extra day, spend that extra couple of days <coughs> to go out there and figure it out. Like one of the things that I try to do is when I have a name or if it's a listing or if it's an image, I always try to get a focus group to work with me. So that could be uh, a company like PicFu. It could be a company like Usability Hub. And all I want to make sure is that whatever I'm looking at, other people have the same uh, idea as I do. And most of the time I'm wrong. So I'll go out there and say, this image or this name is incredible. People get it. I target the demographic that I need. It turns out the majority like either the other image or the other name or the other tagline. So a focus group will definitely, definitely help out. Now, you, I just touched on this. You got to know your audience. So I just, I, I just bought a, um, a domain name called Cigar.Club. And our audience is going to be really kind of trendy cigar smokers. We're not going to the old school, you know, sit in these, you know, cushy lounge chairs, smoke, you know, old guys like myself. Um, anyways, we're going to have it trendy. Most cigar um, websites are boring, you know, browns and blacks. This is going to be, you know, the colors are going to pop. Blues, yellows, reds. And we know our audience. So you've got to know your audience. And how do you know your audience? you got to do competitive analysis. So you go in, you dive deep. If it's an Amazon product, take a look on Amazon or take a look on Shopify if they have a store or do others have a store. Take a look at what people are talking about and then just mark it down. Like Here's the pros, here's the cons, um, here's what you like, here's what you don't like. It might be, you know, a spin-off of a keyword. But anyways, at the end of the day, have a list. Shoot it over to a focus group and see what they're going to say. Now, I don't want to scare you, and anybody who's watching today, um, you're going to have an opportunity to get what we call our brand frame. This is a sort of our proprietary workflow that when we have clients that are, we're working on brand, um, we, we go through each one of these steps. 
Now, most of you will have a heart attack if you saw all these steps. You don't have to do this. If you're creating a, uh, um, a brand on Amazon, um, most of the time you just have to have a good name, good logo, have consistency. Um, you don't have to go through each step, but if you're, you are developing a business and you want to make your business stronger, um, searchable on, um, on Google, make it look like it's a, a, a quality bricks and mortar store, then there's a few other steps that you need to take. So at the end, we'll be posting something called our brand frame. So the next uh, question uh, that we put together were branding no-nos. And uh, there's so many branding no-nos, but the, the, the one is you want to be, you absolutely want to have that name that I was talking about. You want to be consistent. I see some huge companies like Remax, for example. I've seen this with Remax agents where they have a specific blue, a specific red. It should be consistent across the board. Yet, I've had, and I don't know, maybe this is another side of Remax, but I've had business cards that are given to me where the blue is purple. Well, that that doesn't, it's a company that huge should not be having these mistakes. Like you, you think about McDonald's. If I go to a McDonald's in Canada, over in China, <laughs> Philippines, I will get the same burger. Okay, I eat a lot of McDonald's, as most people that know me can tell. And it's always the same. The store, the yellows, the reds are always consistent. So that's probably the biggest thing you want to look at. And then the perceived value. So McDonald's knows their kids, but for you, um, like if you're selling a product on, uh, like on Amazon, they almost force you to have quality images. So, uh, you know, high resolution Im images, they don't force you to spend money on good quality photos. So I, I always say that just because you have tools doesn't make you a carpenter, right? So you can go out there and you think you have the best pictures, um, you take it with your iPhone 11 Pro Max, whatever it is, it's got to be good. No, it sucks. If you, if you don't have the knowledge of lighting and the camera angles and all this other stuff, then the problem you're going to have is that you're going to think it looks good, but the average person out there is going to look at it and let's say you're on, you know, the number one page. You're surrounded by 16 people. You have an iPhone picture that doesn't fill the frame, that has poor quality um, images. Then you have all these competitors that have spent a little bit extra. Now you've got the lighting perfect, they fill the frame as much as they can with that thousand by thousand image, and people can see. Just if it, they were to buy off the image, you would lose, you would lose, you would lose, and you're wondering why. We get this all the time. Like a lot of the times when we're doing um, like our press release, Oh, okay. I see that we have Jeremy and Marcine. Hi, how are you? <laughs> we have viewers. My first Facebook Live. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, what was I saying about... See, I, I get off track. I don't have a script. Um, anyways, let's see. The other thing that you don't want to do uh, when you're looking at an image or the, the no-no is you don't want to copy people. And you can go and you can look like some some Amazon gurus out there say, go and copy the best list and do what they're doing. And that's correct. Do what they're doing. Take a look at what they're doing. They can't be doing things wrong. But if you're taking a look at their image or their um, uh, their copy, don't knock it off. OK, like you want to be unique and you want to have some sort of unique. Um, it's called the USP, unique selling proposition. But. This is the same thing with brand. You want to be different. You want to stand out. Um, oh, I was going back on quality, uh, image, uh, poor image quality. So poor image quality or poor um, content or not understanding, especially when you're doing a brand, uh, when you're doing a logo. A lot of the times, if you're designing a logo or if you get some guy for five bucks, um, they might not know um, quality branding. So quality branding starts with um, your, your font. And you wanna have a font that's consistent. You can have a thick font, you can have, you know, it might be italicized, but you wanna stick with the same sort of fonts. 
many people go out and they create a logo or they create a tagline or they create a business card and it's got like 12 different uh, 12 different types of uh, font on it and it's confusing you just want to make it really specific um, you know to the brand the other thing is the logo there's lots of things that people make a mistake with the logo they don't make it clear um, they don't make that they have too many effects they have too many colors sometimes the logo it works the best just by having a like a one color logo very clean to the point simple is a lot of the times better now what's this oh yeah so and by the way my sons over here are the ones that are saying hey dad you, you got to do a facebook live so yeah okay i know what it is uh, like turn on the camera for me i don't know anything about this stuff so now they're saying, ask a question. Does anybody have a question about branding before we go in any further? And <laughs> so while I'm waiting for the questions to come in, because my son did this, so I guess that means speak. Let's go into a, a few other questions. So if I had a tip, uh, one tip to give anybody about uh, the brand, and this is not a branding class, um, this is something that we can definitely help. And if, even after this, if you have questions about brand, I'd be more than happy to dig into. But branding is really like I could talk a full day on it, uh, on the different elements of it, and we still would be scratching the surface. But I would highly recommend that you go to a true branding specialist. If you, if you go to somebody that you're trying to get on the cheap, then you're gonna get that on the cheap. But if you, uh, if you go to a, a company that understands design, understands even more so corporate identity, they're gonna ask you the questions. And just to give you an example, let's see if I can get our brand frame up on my computer screen. And these are some of the questions that we ask, like, or any branding company should. So you might start off, we have three pillars, but one of the things is a creative breach, uh, brief. Uh, research your audience, missions, values. We have to understand that. And once we get all this information together, like your brand voice, the look and feel, the buyer's journey, um, we, we create personas. So, you know, we, we try to figure out if somebody's going to be looking at your brand, who are they? And if they are, let's target them. And then that kind of flows over to website and funnels and, you know, all this other stuff. But again, the, the brand frame, or sorry, the, uh, the brand frame that I'm referring to has about 20 different things you should be looking at. So a lot of times you get the, uh, you know, a person that's taken one graphics class or they might be okay in graphics or they think they're okay in graphics. You pay them 40 bucks and you think you've got something fantastic. It, it's, then you get the, the, the fonts and wow, this is so good when it really is quite terrible. So I would do my research, I would spend the money and for a brand, people always talk about, you know, ah, oh, I got such a deal, I only paid $99. Yeah, and yeah, that's what it's worth. Uh, you could spend anywhere from uh, a few hundred dollars up to, like I know one of my brands, I, I spent, I got a deal from a company 20 years ago, I spent $5,000, but they laid everything out for me and it did incredible job for me when I had the brand, when I developed the brand. So think of it that way, is that you wanna go out there, you wanna make sure that you, you found a company, sh check out their, like check out some case studies that they've done. If you start to see like just what I call the Indian templates, you know, and you'll see this in the Philippines too, but it's, it's just basically they go and they, they get templates and they just plug your name in. They're, they're useless. They're not gonna do anything for you. But if you see some really creative, cool looking logos that meet the niche, so that's important. If you're doing a, a logo and all of a sudden you're doing something that could be for lingerie for the pet niche, not gonna work, right? So keep that in mind as well. We have a question? Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Marcin is asking, at which stage for a new e-com seller would you start considering branding support? For a new, for a new seller, I, I think it's most important first of all to do your research okay so go do your competitive research check out your competitors logos like if they have websites go into their amazon site check out their brands see what's positive what's negative and then figure out your audience 
So take that information, take the colors that you'd like, um, that, that you would like, and suggest that to the artist, and then let them work with it. I would not do it on my own. So um, you, like, even though, let's say this is a test brand, you still want to make sure. For me, I like jumping in with two feet. Do I have to spend 5,000 bucks? No, but you could spend a few hundred bucks just to get a good quality logo with a quality font from a real graphic artist. So, you know, that, that, that would work. That's probably where, the, where I would go. And then as you expand, because remember, you can always change your brand, always. Like you change your logo. So like a good example, in Canada here, we have um, uh, this place called M&M Meat Shops. And they started out for 20 years. They had like 300 shops, high quality food, and it was brown and orange, which are the colors of food, brown and orange. That's when you, when you think of, and you're going through a marketing class, they'll tell you brown and oranges are what to do. However, society changed and they wanted a crisper, fresher feel. So they went with blues and more of a crisp orange. And now that's their brand. But the key when you're changing your brand is you've got to change it across the board. If you have the browns and oranges over here and the green or the blues and the oranges over here, it won't work. So that's one thing that you, you have to take in consideration. So you can go and try it, see if the brand works. If I understand your question properly, so you're, you're brand new into the, into the game and you want to um, you know, try out, get the name first. The name and the domain name are key. Let's go on to the domain name for a sec. So you've got the domain or you've got a great name. So a lot of people, what they'll do is let's say it's pets for you okay oh that's the name i got i got my heart set on it. everybody loves it okay great now you go and try to find the domain and you can't get it on a dot com you freak out because that's the only thing that you've ever heard is dot com so you come up with something creative like pets with the number four and the letter u well don't be creative because you're going to be losing out on a ton of business if people can't spell it or if they have to guess or if it's, it's on a podcast, then guess what? You're going to lose business. So what I try to do is I have, you know, my name that I came up with. I go over to Namecheap or I go over to um, uh, GoDaddy. I search and I'll see the, uh, the new TLDs that come down. Like let's say it's a dot club dot store dot whatever it is. It could be like f for... Um, let's say that you're doing a podcast or a blog. It could end with dot blog. So I'm in the pet business. I have a wildlifepets.com and part of it is a blog. I could have wildlifepets.blog um, and drive traffic over that way. But you don't have to go with a dot com. That's the biggest mistake. So what ends up happening? People will hyphenate their word wrong. You know, you shouldn't do that anymore. They'll put 30 names or 30 characters into their domain too long. They'll put the words the and and so they can be different. So all it is is taking away from that really clean, um, uh, that really clean brand that you can create. So if you can't get it in a dot club and you can't get it with any of the other 400 domains out there that make sense, then you have to go back to the drawing board, unfortunately. So and I hope that makes sense. So, you know, it, it is tough because I've had it where I've got this incredible name and there's nowhere I can get this domain. And so I have to go back to the drawing board. And the other thing, once you have your domain or once you have your name and you've got your logo, uh, come up with a great tagline. So for soap.club, natural soap for natural people, you know, something along those lines. So um, I always, by the way, I always make sure I get a premium domain, even if it's pointing to, let's say soap club, so soap.club. Um, you're probably not going to get a trademark on soap.club because it's too generic. Okay. It's just, it's too generic. I know this for a fact. So Norm's Soap Club, I can get all day long. So I personalize it a bit. So although the, 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 the company is, or the brand is Soap Club or Norm's Soap Club, you can point either one of those back and forth to one another. So you might be known as, you might have the name soap.club. And that's how you can be branded. But to get the trademark, you have to have Norm Soap Club, okay? Um, but you still have that great, absolutely incredible domain, premium domain. Now, here's a bonus. So anybody that's listening 
today, if you go to um, names.club, okay, this is a, it's a service that's out there for people who want to get premium domains. Like if it's a $2 domain, you're not going to find it there. Um, but if you're looking for uh, like honey.club or whatever you're looking for, it it's not only clubs. They used to have it where it was just a club, but it's a, it's multiple domains. So you go in and it will show you, um, let's say it's honey. So it might be a $5,000 domain and you have a heart attack or, you know, you fall backwards and there's no way, you know, I'm brand new to this game. There's no way I'm paying 5,000 bucks. Well, here's the deal. You go to that, or you go over to domain, um, uh, names.club, you get, uh, well, what, whatever, what did I say? Honey.club at 5,000 bucks. Well, they have, they allow you to buy the name. You have to pay, put a little bit down and they break the payments over 60 months. So all of a sudden now you're down to a hundred bucks a month or 40 bucks a month or 10 bucks a month, whatever it is. And if you decide that it's a flop, you don't pay. You stop paying. The, the name is um, re uh, just uh, released back into the database and you go on with your life. So you've got this really incredible, and that's what I did with Cigar Club. Cigar Club cost a lot of money and I didn't want to, I'm very frugal. I didn't want to go out and spend all this money. So all that, uh, my, like the partners, I've got a couple partners in the, with, uh, with Cigars.Club. We just decided that we were going to buy it and we're going to pay it off monthly. So anyways, that's another tip for you. Um, Let's see, how has COVID affected your business? Oh, good question. So COVID, um, COVID for the business, uh, it's, it's actually increased. And a lot of the clients that uh, we're working with, because there's so many people uh, working from home, we found that a lot of the brands uh, were, um, were selling, oh gosh, 80% more maybe. It depends on the brand and it depends if you're in the travel. Like I sell travel pillows, I'm having a problem, but I also sell uh, screen wipes. So the sanitizers. So luckily enough, unfortunately for the disease, but you know, this has helped um, help us sell product. But anything from, you know, soaps to men's grooming products to dog food. Like one thing I've never thought of is with, with what's going on right now, dog food. I mean, people are going out there and buying bully sticks or gourmet treats or higher end premium dog products or cat products. And so um, it's great, but here's the catch. <laughs> I think that um, the typical inventory strategy has to change. And this is, we're going off branding, but I think it's really important for people to know. So what we're doing is typically what we would do is buy a thousand units. The 500 of them would go over to Amazon, 500 would stay at our warehouse. And then when it got down to 150 units, we'd ship the 500 units over to Amazon leaving the warehouse with nothing. So what we're doing now is we've gone back to our suppliers. We've negotiated new terms, which is very, it's easier to do right now. And here's what we did. We said, okay, when you send over the thousand, put another thousand into inventory. And we've been either, we've been either able to negotiate 30% down or they've done it for free, believe it or not, in some cases. So when the, the, the stock starts to move and that second 500 units moves over to Amazon, we take the thousand units and we send them over by sea. So we have another thousand units back here. And then a new order goes into production, which stays in the Chinese warehouse. So I hope that didn't confuse you. If you did, just let me know, you know, and I can explain it again. But what that allows you to do is have this inventory that's just constantly flowing, even in fourth quarter. So, the, I mean, the biggest problem going back to branding is you can have an incredible brand. It kicks, it kicks butt. You, you get a home run. You run out of inventory. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. And that's what's happening right now with COVID. People didn't expect the sales um, the factories in China were shut down. Now people that are out of inventory, um, the people that have inventory are cleaning up. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So I guess we're running this down to, you know, close to the end. And I just wanted to let you know we're going to be doing this um, every week. Uh, I don't know if the time's going to change. I don't know if the date's going to change. I mean, I hope this was helpful. And uh, if, uh, I guess the, the social media thing, my kids are telling me, I got to talk to you about social media. It's at Norm Farrar, or you can go to my new website, uh, normanfarrar.com. And oh, by the way, YouTube, it's subscribe and ring, ring, ring that bell. So that's coming from the old guy. So anyways, have a good day. Enjoy yourself. And uh, I hope you learned something from this.